Hey, hey, it's TBA and welcome to episode 17 of our Super Proliferation run. And today as the sun rises above twinning to the planet we left on last time as well, we have a little bit more work to do here. Today we are going to wrap up finishing setting up our basics. Um, we um, have access to most of the rare resources now, not all of them. And on this specific planet we have something very important to do because... We have a lot of crude oil on this planet, which we haven't actually put to use yet. And oil is something we really badly need because our home planet is probably at this point running quite low on that. Because of course, oil is technically infinite to a point, but it does decrease over time as you slowly drain your uh, oil seeps. So you do need to make sure you replace it. And honestly, even 80 per second, is not that much so we will need to expand further and further as we find it but for now this will do now um, first thing to note when you are starting your production of oil is that you need to be a little bit efficient about it as with everything in this game of course so the way that i like to approach this is set up an pls so this is the uh, planetary version not the big one there's no need to use the big one and then have a few places where you set up your uh, oil production like this and of course th there's probably a few more of these uh, close by so for example i have one over here and, and there's one over here there's actually quite a lot of these over here um five of them i'm a little bit too far away now so you can set up your oil production like this and then just belt it into one single pls um Remember, this is only 80 per second in the entire planet. So we have about 12 here. We have a little bit more here. So this is actually not even one full belt. Um, so you could either combine belts or just belt it indirectly. It doesn't really matter. Um, and then, of course, make sure you power this and that you set your drones in it. Now, it might actually be worth um, spreading it across multiple PLSs, even if it's just four or five um, seeps like here, um, because you will struggle to transport it in a quick enough fashion to your main facility. We are actually going to be producing the oil on this planet in such a way that that means we don't have to export raw oil from this planet anywhere. We immediately process it to um, refined oil as well of course as hydrogen hydrogen is just a side product but the reason for doing this locally is that we can uh, transport the oil directly to the planet where the oil is needed and that we can transport the hydrogen directly to whichever planet the hydrogen is needed so we don't have to first transport it to a planet then refine it there and then Probably transport it two times more because then the oil needs to go somewhere and the hydrogen needs to go somewhere. So be efficient about it, process it locally and transport it from there. Now, I'm going to set up a couple of more of these things around the entire planet. Uh, also, make sure we tap into the last resources and then we're going to talk about ore. Okay, so I hooked up every single resource on the planet except for the few resources that are under our domes. But other than that, we should now have access to a lot of juicy silicon and everything like that but mainly of course we have now access to a lot of oil i made some extra room next to our proliferation facility which by the way is now completely stagnant because we're producing so much proliferators our uh, assemblers don't know what to do with it uh, we are actually completely stocked up on uh, nanotubes as well as you can see so yeah that's working like intended uh, the good thing is by the way that our research is now fairly stable once again uh, it was actually stagnating because we didn't proliferate the system enough because we ran out of proliferation on our home planet. Um, we have now fixed that, so I'm really happy that that is where we started because, of course, all our builds are dependent on actually being proliferated. So not being proliferated was not a good thing for our balance in our system. Now, we are actually going to use a blueprint that we already have used before. We had a pretty nice blueprint for proliferated oil that produces 30 oil per second. And the nice thing about that is there's a few reasons that that's actually really nice. So first of all, because we have about 90 um, oil per second available on this planet by building these three times, we can pretty much use exactly the amount of buildings that we need in order to produce all of that um, oil. Now, of course, you do need to keep into account that even though this says we have 80 per second, we actually have a little bit more um, because the 
oil production is affected by vein utilization. So we have five levels of that, each level improving mining speed by 10% and actually reducing the consumption. But in this uh, instance, the mining speed is what is important because mining speed is not just mining speed actually, it's also things like oil, it's uh, things like the water um, drilling, it is uh, also your gas giants, basically anything that produces resources, the raw resources is affected by vein utilization. So um, we have probably around, uh, well, we got uh, five levels, so plus 50%. So we actually have something like 120 oil per second on this planet. Mm, wage fair, to be honest, is a reason to uh, build four of these. Uh, on the other hand, we also know that the production will be going down over time. So, um, yeah, there's also a reason why you could say, well, let's build a little bit less. I'm actually going to um, use some foundations and put in a fourth build of this, just so we can make sure we are fully optimizing all the resources that we have. Now, um, because oil is used in a lot of resources, uh, a lot of places, having it be transported from four different ILSs is going to be fairly efficient as well. Um, the, oh, this is actually set to supply, so I'll change that in the in the blueprint and I'll re-upload it because, of course, it won't actually work as a, if it's just supplying. Um, but what I wanted to say is that what you want to do is make sure, of course, you have drones and vessels. Um, but, but for now, we're not mass producing Casimir crystals, which is the main source that we're going to use the hydrogen on. And um, having four of these makes sure that we run... Um, a lower risk of being overflowing on hydrogen for now. That's probably not going to be an issue long term because we're going to need all the hydrogen we can need, uh, we can get. But um, at least for now, let's just make sure that we are always producing oil. Uh, there, we don't actually have a massive demand for oil in our current builds anyway, so it's not a problem if one of two of these facilities actually get full um, because of hydrogen. But in the long run, of course, you do want to make sure you don't have a hydrogen bottleneck while you need oil. So. Anyway, let me go and finish these builds and then let's get on with it. Okay, there we go. That is 120 oil per second uh, waiting to happen. So let's see if that actually works when we light it up. Uh, and I think that should actually be pretty cool when we look at it. So let's see. Party set. Boom. That is a lot of lit up oil refineries. And as you can see, all working like intended. Now, once again, I just updated the blueprint. Um, so we actually have the oil being requested by default because that's one of those things I am going to forget. So maybe you're like me. Uh, hopefully you're not as forgetful as I am, but that's something I would forget. So yeah, looking pretty good. 120 oil at your service. So no, really, no need to worry about that any further. Now the other thing that I do want to do is make sure we also have some of our base production ready to go on this planet. And an easy way to do that is, um, at least in terms of water, that is something we are going to need large quantities of as well, is just to take, for example, a little tiny hub like this. I need to make it a little bigger. Let's just make it slightly bigger so we can do it like this. And then just go right through the middle of a large water patch like we have over here. And the reason for doing it like this is that you then have a very nice straight line where you can put all your uh, water production on. So you don't have to worry too much about uh, having to deal with all kinds of curves and things like that. Uh, water, there we go. So now we should be able to just do something like this. Uh, why is there no foundation support there? Well, apparently there is no foundation support there. But we should be able to do, once again, a very straight line like this. I was probably a bit, a little bit too sloppy there with the, uh, with the lines. But as you can see, it's still pretty straightforward to do it like this. Just weird that... Oh, I actually have a lack of the item now. I was wondering why can't I place it down there it looks pretty good to me but yeah um water water it's always the last one isn't it oh wait I requested them over here there we go so maybe not 100 but let's get a few more and then set up a large water facility to make sure we have all the water we'll ever need and there we go this is a lot of water coming in and you don't really need that much water to be honest, but we might as well, once we start building a larger build like this, 
we might as well make it big enough so it's actually going to be useful until the uh, late game um this is more than actually a full belt as you can see this is almost um almost a full belt combined so all in all pretty nice now i did make a little bit of a blueprint for you uh, of 15 of these um water pumps next to each other with the belt because to be honest the one thing i hate about these builds is having to put all the little individual belts so making your life a little bit easy it's a very simple blueprint but yeah might as well put it in for you uh, now another thing i did while i was making these builds i actually did scale up where is my uh, facilities here I actually did scale up the power facilities on this planet. Again, we had a lot of accumulators waiting for us anyway um, because of the um, overflow of um, energy on Twinning 1. So um, this is just putting that to use. It's never going to run out on the other planet, so it's also never going to run out on this planet. Uh, that does mean that we have now used most of our surplus energy on this planet, so we won't be able to use it elsewhere. I do actually think we still have a little bit of overflow, um, so we do have a bit of surplus that we can spend elsewhere. Just something to uh, to keep in mind that you don't want to keep building these while not actually supplying more power to the system as well. I might actually hop back to twinning one, and uh, because we had the 160% energy from wind turbines over there, and just uh, fill the planet up with wind turbines or something, and then uh, make more surplus energy if we ever need it. But for now, uh, let's stick with that. Now, we have a lot of water incoming. Um, and that is pretty much all that we need to do on this planet. Now, there's a few other basics that we have to sort out before we can really get to the end game stuff. And zooming out a little bit. Um, I think we have a nice system somewhere close. I looked this up beforehand. It's actually in the corner over here. It's called Pulcherima and um yeah we have a lot of basics over here but we have more oil which is always good we have fire ice which was the main thing that i was looking for uh, along with sulfuric acid now bonus points actually we have more spiniform stalagmite crystal on this planet so yay more nanotubes uh, and we also have uh, more kimberlite yay more diamonds and we have organic crystal so all of these things are really good and they're all in the same system so let's hop to this system and think about which different name we're going to give it because this is obviously not one of you and like i promised every new system that we visit is going to na be named after one of you i don't really have a specific order in mind just yet so i'm just gonna pick a random name from someone who is uh, often commenting on these posts uh, these um, videos so if you want to be one of them in the future make sure you comment on every video and that probably helps your chances all right let's jump to it and welcome to the Pulcherima system, or as it shall henceforth be known, and let's actually rename the entire system, the Slammer system. So Slammer is one of you, those of you who has been really helpful with pointing out little mistakes in the blueprints, missing sorters, things like that. So thank you Slammer, and thank you to everyone else who is putting up comments, pointing out those little errors in the blueprints so I can fix them for the rest of you. They are helping you out as much as they are helping me out, so thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you're not Slammer, but you have been really commenting helpful, of course, this holds the same for you, and maybe the next system will be named after you. So, Slammer 1, we are here for this really nasty looking stuff, and that is the Sulfuric Ocean. Now, it's not really a rocket science and as to how to... Um, make use of this uh, it is worth noting that we actually don't have that much sulfuric acid on this planet and uh, there's a few small oceans here but it will be more than enough for our purposes because of course we don't need a um, huge amount of acid at this point either so should be fine we do have a lot of other uh, resources on this planet specifically a lot of iron which is really useful so i am actually going to utilize all of that on this planet as well of course as all of the other resources and um, yeah, just make sure we get the most out of this. Uh, we actually do have 130% solar energy as well. So I'm just going to have some fun with this planet and see what we can make of it. Well, step one is complete. We now have a huge amount of sulfuric acid coming in. And this is just a setup for the first uh, ocean, although this is one of the larger ones, so the other ones won't be quite as spectacular. So the way I set this up, um, because remember you can't make oceans, so you do need to be a little bit careful with these smaller oceans if you want to make the most use out of them. I first set up 
the um, bumps are all around the edges so you optimize that space um, and then I make little islands in the middle where I then place a few more on. Now you do need to make, make sure you actually have somewhere for the belts to go out um, and they do tend to clip these um, these pumps. Um, for, so for example I couldn't actually place a pump over here because it was interfering with the other pumps. Um, it, I, I wouldn't suggest that you fiddle around with it too long. It doesn't really matter if you have one or two more pumps or less. Um, but it is worth when you, once you're in the planet where you're doing this to do it right once so you don't have to come back and do it all over. Uh, similarly I also recommend that once you're on the planet like I'm on now just make sure you put on all the advanced miners and all the things like copper, iron ore etc. You are going to need it especially things like silicon and iron ore you can't really have enough of that and as you can see the ILS is already full so we now have 10,000 sulfuric acid just waiting for us to be used uh, and that's just one of the ILS so I'm gonna set up a few more but once again make sure you set up all the resources uh, I think I'm actually also going to set up this planet for some major accumulator charging so um, yeah be right back okay so I placed a few solar panels and I kind of kept going um, we now have an entire planet full of Solar panels. Well, and of course, I did make sure I put some effort into getting all the other resources tapped, and of course, all the assets productions because that's where we came here for. But I kind of just kept going and pl kept placing down solar panels. So I think we pretty much built our own little Dyson sphere now. We have a total of six gigawatts, apparently, uh, depending on a little bit on where the sun is coming from. But um, yeah, that's a lot of power. Uh, as you can see we are not even using all the power to charge the main reason for that is that we simply don't have that many empty accumulators in our system we are char charging up quite a few and of course I'm, I placed several versions of our charging build on this planet once again my theory is if you're on the planet build whatever you intend to build on the planet make sure you finish with the planet so you never have to ever come back again in this case I made sure we have now pretty much an infinite amount of asset. I tapped into every single asset ocean on this planet. Um, I honestly have no idea how much asset per second we're now producing, but I'm guessing it's in the hundreds. So for the foreseeable future, we don't have to think about uh, sulfuric acid ever again, nor do we have to think about whether or not we have enough charging power to charge up accumulators. Um, that does not necessarily mean we should now just start plastering uh, discharges all over the place on every single planet for the main reason is that you actually do need to have enough charged or actually enough accumulators in general in your system um, either charged or discharged but you do need a little bit of a surplus in order for it to be uh, traveling back and forth between your planets to that extent I built a little build somewhere on this planet i actually have no idea where i left it um it's just a tiny little build that's producing uh, about five uh, let me check where it is it's somewhere around poles i think um it's uh, supposed to be producing around five um accumulators per second assuming we can actually uh, get enough resources to it the main problem there is that it's actually using the um crystal silicon crystals uh, which we're not mass producing at the moment anywhere in our universe we are producing them uh, from one of our earlier builds so we are actually getting some extra accumulators from that i have no idea where i left that build i'm pretty sure it's on the planet but really how far away can it be i, I might have scrolled past it by now um i know i put it somewhere close ish to the poles and close ish to all these charging facilities where is it? Don't don't make me look like a liar that I put, didn't put it down. Nah, I'm gonna look for it. Just a sec. Found it. There we go. Uh, like I said, it's nothing special. Just a little tiny build. Of course, it is proliferated. We're not proliferating the outputs. There's no reason to proliferate outgoing um, accumulators, especially not the uncharged ones. Uh, but like I see, uh, like I said, as you can see, we have. Uh, a little bit too little uh, incoming crystal silicon 
we do have it incoming every now and then, but uh, yeah, it's just going to be slow. Then again, we don't necessarily need tons of accumulators in our system either at this point. But of course, as soon as we uh, get a moment, we will start building some more crystal silicon because it's a rare resource. So somewhere along the line, we are going to find it and make a nice little bit out of it. Um, I think that concludes it for this planet. We're not entirely done for this episode just yet. Um, but um, yeah, make sure whenever you leave a planet, once again, that you set your uh, hub on the poles to uh, zero on everything so you don't waste your resources. And let's hop on to the next planet. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Slammer 4. And this planet is very cold, very empty, kind of boring, but it benefit of a lot of ice is that we also have a lot of fire ice on this planet now i made a build for this i'm not gonna build it completely for you um because it's very similar to a build that we've just just done before um but to quickly show you how it works we have three belts of fire ice coming in on each side and that means we also have three full belts of graphene coming out on each side along with one and a half belt of hydrogen on each side coming out as well to make life a little easier there's actually an ILS on the outsides to get, um, take care of a lot of the outputs um, remember that this means that we have 180 graphene per second coming out of this build and uh, 90 hydrogen per second as well the hydrogen itself we are going to definitely need um, I've been making a few builds by now that all produce hydrogen as a side product so the next episode is going to be spent on making use of all that hydrogen. And believe me, we are going to wish that we had even more hydrogen than that. So if you have a gas giant nearby, you might as well start putting down some um, orbitals on that for more hydrogen, more deuterium and more um, fire ice, depending of course on the type of gas giant that you have close. Um, other than that, uh, remember that when you are on the planet, make sure you tap into all the other resources on that planet as well. I'm still in the process of doing that, by the way, so in case you were wondering why that's not completely done yet. Um, but it was light, and uh, I wanted to show you the build in the daylight, so that's why I interrupted my mining. But of course, make sure that you visit all the planets, and um, once you're on the planet, make sure you finish that planet. Well, like I said before, you don't want to have to come back at all. Now, there is I don't recommend visiting every planet and every system, so while I say... When you visit a planet, make a uh, mine it completely empty, basically. Um, I don't recommend visiting every single planet and every single system that you visit. So taking the Slammer system as an example, we visit the Slammer 1 and Slammer 4. We uh, will be making full use of everything on the planet. Uh, in this case, Slammer 3 is actually a very good system as well. It has a more oil, it has organic crystal and spinny form, all resources that we really want really need uh, it actually has a lot of coal and silicon on it as well so again resources that are very useful so you might want to consider if you're playing in the same systems as i am to also uh, basically um, mine everything on this planet as well but if you take for example slammer 2 there's barely any resources. Well, there's a lot of silicon, but other than that, there's not really anything interesting on this planet. Uh, it doesn't really have any rare resources either that we necessarily want to go out of our way for to, to get. So um, this is an example of a planet that you can just skip if you want and not completely mine empty. I would do that on the planets that you have a clear use for. So basically the planets with a lot of interesting rare resources and then just mine all the copper, iron, etc. that you find along the way. That's probably going to be enough. If it's not, you can always find a planet with a lot of uh, iron or whatever it is you need and specifically go mine for that. Um, but it's easy to burn out if you have, you kind of feel like you have to do everything on every planet that you that you come across now there's another reason you might want to skip a few planets like this because there is nothing interesting on this planet and specifically on this planet there's no ocean either so there's a lot of building room on this planet this is a perfect planet for one of our larger builds later on we can basically turn this entire planet into a build by just paving it over and not feel bad about it because again there's not really that much interest on this planet to begin with so another consideration to um, basically skip a few planets here and there if there's not really anything of interest on those planets now 
Um, getting back to this planet, um, as you can see, the build is uh, pretty nice up and running. It's not completely up and running yet because I haven't uh, mined all the fire eyes on this planet just yet. Uh, but as you can see, we already have thousands of graphene and thousands of hydrogen ready to go. Um, remember, we also are going to need, um, well, we also already have now pretty much infinite amounts of nanotubes, um, infinite amounts of sulfuric acid, actually infinite amounts, um, maybe not infinite amount of production, but it's never going to run out on the planet that we just finished. Um, we have the water, we have um, the diamonds. So all in all, we are now at a pretty good place where we have access to a lot of rare resources. We also have access uh, to, for example, organic crystal that we found on one of the planets before. Um, and we have, in the meanwhile, uh, provided us ourselves with access to a lot of basic resources like copper, iron, etc. So that means that we are starting to get in a very good position to focus on some of our more complicated super builds. Um, so yeah pretty much good to go from here so i'm looking forward to the next episode when we are starting to uh, get a few of those more complex builds going and we also want to start working towards our dyson sphere so if you haven't done so yet make sure you uh, develop all the stress system resources so you can actually make a pretty nice dyson sphere um if you're still here and you're still listening to this and you have a very nice design for a dyson sphere that you recommend let me know in the comments below. I'm very much interested to um, try out a few new designs for Dyson Spheres. Now, I do have to say, I don't really necessarily care for those very dense um, designs that are kind of like trying to optimize the power. I mean, sure, you can do that, uh, but it's typically overkill. So I'm specifically interested in just nice looking um, designs. So something that just looks pretty and that happens to produce uh, a lot of... Um, energy as a side product then that's all also very good of course all right um i hope you enjoyed this one guys and i will catch you in the next one